service dot add transient i stuff details or stuff details that's it that's all the different injection works so uh, if you we can go a little further to find out the difference between add transient and then add add instant so add transient every time you refresh the page and it comes it'll restart this it will reinitiate this um object but add um add instance calls only once then it will be reused the same uh, instance all the time so to prove that uh, let's go ahead and um, stuff details i'm going to add here Create that new grid of this string, and then I'm going to assign this value in here. Okay, let's play this. it's getting ready so you see that ends with the ed6 I refresh this page it's now changing to CCB so it's every time the instance is um, every request that instances keep changing so if we change this startup to add instance so to rule the initiate only once and then it will be used all the time. Let's stop this. Okay. Stop with this. Okay. Let's try. Um, uh, please skip this little bit section while watching this video rather than waiting for me okay now so we got um, 860 refresh it's never changing see the difference so even though I refresh the inst uh, that grid is not changed so that's how the instance works so instance though so you can think about what are the properties you can keep it uh, not changeable so we want to use that property again and again for every request even though user refresh it so it's uh, really helpful those kind of scenarios so you can find the scenario where when, which scenario you can use the add instance and which scenario you can use transient there are difference between add instance and add uh, singleton and add scoped so um, there are a few differences there so but if you see that if, right now you see these differences add transient add instances Add instance initiated only once and then reused all the time. Okay.
Okay, the independent injection is good enough. Then next tutorial we'll talk about how we can integrate Autofac or any other uh, structure map um, dependent injection instead of this existing dependent injection. Uh, for now, let's go to the um, launch settings. Let's talk about how the environment works. We click the launch settings. Uh, remember, in the last tutorial we showed here anything you add is IAS Express. That's what you see in the profiler here. So when you when you want to run as IAS Express, you choose this, and the hosting environment going to be development. How about I want to run IAS Express, but I want to run the staging. Let's do that. So I'll say here staging and I'll change this host environment to staging. Same way, so just control S. The moment you press there, and then you'll see immediately start appearing here. Okay, what is the advantage of it? So advantage is see if you go to the startup code. There are some section we want to if it is staging, we want to avoid. Um, we want to add some or some other uh, method to be called or some logging should be happen. If it is development, we want exception to be um, uh, occurred and database errors should be occurred. So if it is staging environment, we don't want uh, something else to be happened. Like if you say environment dot env dot staging is staging so there are uh, by default uh, Microsoft is providing is development is is development is production is staging anything else if you want any other configuration to be added you can use this is environment option so we'll I'll go through that for now just click is staging if it is is staging I want to do something different okay so let's test this whether this happens or not I'll keep the debugger on here and control S. So right now we have AS Express which is supposed to go to the IES development. So let's go through click go ahead and click this. See, it's actually already it says it's a is an is development is true. So that's why this section started off, uh, occurring. So you didn't even go through this section, this staging section. So let's continue and uh, stop this. Let's click is express staging. Okay, now click this. See, now it's went through the staging environment. So this is really advantage when we need to do some of the option, uh, some of the configuration to be run, or some load, some kind of uh, class or DLL should be loaded if it is in production or it's in staging. So what if they already have provided us a launch settings with we can add a production also, but what about other than development, staging, and production? Because not some company might have more than three environment so let's see how we can make it work I'm going to copy paste this IS Express I'm going to call this as a QA and here we can say QA environment right control S so now we will see IS Express QA so to make this to run for success to test this I'm going to add one more if condition here we don't have 
we do have a staging this production listener but we don't have is a queue environment so to make that works you can say is environment open brace and put queue in it okay control s let's keep this here oh sorry sorry stop stop Split this plus ASX plus QA. See, it's reached the QA environment successfully. Okay, so now we have all different environments so what are the other features they provided us to reuse this environment option i mean we helpful this environment is helpful so let's go to the layout page In this see the layout page environment name is equal to development then we need to call this to uh, css if it is staging and production, call this CSS. So we can control, um, uh, depends on the environment, we can control what CSS should be loaded and maybe the CSS path should be different. So we have a lot of flexibility to change the link section or anything else we can add here. Maybe some, some, some JavaScript should be run only on production, not in the, uh, not in the development. To prove that, uh, since we already have a QA environment, let's copy paste this. I'm going to say here is a QA. And um, I'm going to add one more see, links. I'm going to say this is test. Okay. All right, so let's uh, run this. So it is going through test QA or not. So it's already going through QA. Let's continue. This will be really helpful when you have a multiple environment and especially when in your, when you have production so you might have some kind of uh, uh, technique to keep different JS file or different uh, functional should be happen only in production environment but this section really helps for for example we can keep this section in a partial view uh, so we can maybe we can keep us each the three different partial view one is for QA one is for development one is for this so depends on the environment we can append uh, depend, uh, depends on the environment this particular section will get appended so let's right click inspect let's see the view source See here, test.css. Let's close this and uh, why not we try development and see whether we're getting that data, data whether that whether we get that test.css or not. Sorry about my system, it's a little bit slow. Thing it got stuck.
um, a little afraid to open development anyway so let's do that okay let's change to uh, IAS Express um, I pretty sure uh, I'm not gonna run this now since it's gonna take a little bit more time so anyway if you try to open development uh, which is IAS Express this is this tool will be there and you'll be missing this so the whole environment is really helpful so we can add this environment names anywhere in any other partial page or anything so we can uh, make some kind of changes depends on the environment all right so let's go ahead and start look at the um, 